I want to ask a, a question of you today. We talk a lot about this in, in Christian circles. Today we're going to be looking at kind of two topics that we want to we want to meld them together a little bit. And the first one here is choice. We talk a lot about choice in the church. And one of our favorite sayings is always that we serve a God of choice. Do you believe that? You can share with me now. <laughs> Do you believe that? Do we serve a God of choice? Yes. Everybody says yes. yes. <laughs> What's that, Tom? By choice. choice. Okay. We serve a God of choice. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. yes, we do. Yes, we do. Yes. And you know what? I agree. And I also disagree. Okay? Look at the verse we just read. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Talking about his plans. Not your plans, not your wife's plans, or your husband's plans, or your boss's plans. God, very plainly here, tells us he has a plan for you. We serve a God of choice. I believe we do in the little things. You know, the, the, the moment. I, I woke up this morning, and I decided what I was going to have for breakfast. I decided what I was going to put on. In the moment, we have these choices. But I didn't have any choice in the fact that I was born in Denver. I didn't have any choice in the fact that I was born a male. Those are some pretty big situations in my life. I didn't have any choice in that. I didn't have any choice in a lot of stuff. I think of my marriage to my beautiful bride Cindy here. Most people would say, well, you had a choice in that. And I did. But the fact is, is if you look at the whole story, God orchestrated that. And I'm thankful that he did. And he brought me and Cindy together. He orchestrated that. I didn't really have any choice in that. Cindy and I, I believe, were destined to be married. And I don't think I had much choice in that. Even though it took him a long time. What's that word? <laughs> so even though it took him a long time. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> we serve a God of choice. To an extent. But let's not forget that he's sovereign. He's in charge and he loves us. Turn, turn to your left a little bit. Turn to the book of Proverbs. Proverbs 29. Actually, I lied to you. 19. Proverbs 19. And uh, I'll read, I'll read verse 21. It's pretty plain. It says, many are the plans in a man's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. Mm -hmm. Pretty simple. We, we serve a God of choice to an extent, my friends. But we also serve a God who's totally in charge. Let's not ever forget that. I have freedom to choose. It's kind of like being, being faithful in the small things. I can be faithful in the small things and watch him orchestrate the rest. That gives me peace. It really does. Let's, uh, let's have another prayer. Here. Father God, Lord, I just want to thank you. I want to thank you for this gorgeous day, this gorgeous Sabbath morning. I want to thank you for my friends. 
And Lord, I just pray right now that as I hopefully speak a message that gives you the glory, I just pray that you would speak through me. Help me to help me to get out of the way, Lord, and to just give you all the praise and the glory and the honor right now. We just love you, Lord. Thank you. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We have a a new vision statement here at Step 7. It's right here. Put it together a couple months ago, and it says, The Christ-centered vision of freedom, strengthened by the leadership skills taught in our small groups, our sober living homes, and our Sabbath morning celebrations. I really love that statement. Because a vision needs to be a future statement. And it starts right off by talking about a vision, a Christ-centered vision of freedom. But today, I want to take a look right here. Leadership. And I want to combine that with what we were just talking about, choices. We need to start when it comes to leadership right at the beginning. And I want everybody in this room to know that you are a leader. Okay? Everybody in this room is a leader. But for the purpose of today's message, here at Step 7, I want us all to start at the very foundation. I want us to start at the, the bottom rung of the ladder. And when we talk about leadership, we talk about how well are we doing at leading our life. Let's start at the beginning here. How well do we lead our lives with the choices that we make on a day-to-day -day basis? That's where it's got to start. It's a great message for step seven. I want to look at two quick stories this morning. One of them comes from the Old Testament. It's the book of uh, uh, the, the gentleman by the name of Moses. One of the greatest leaders in the Old Testament. And the second one, we're going to bring Jesus into it, obviously. Okay. Turn to, uh, turn to Exodus chapter 3, please. Exodus chapter 3. And we're going to take a look here at a, at a really neat story of, of the beginning, you might say, of Moses' leadership. This is the story of, of God calling him into service. He speaks to him through this burning bush experience. It's kind of the beginning of Moses' service to God. And if you look at Moses' life, he lived to be 120 years old. And you can cut it into three parts. Three equal parts. 40, 40, and 40. He lived 40 years in Egypt in royalty. He thought he was an Egyptian. He found out at the end of that 40 years that, uh-oh, <laughs> I'm a Hebrew, I'm Jewish. And he ran, he ended up killing someone and took off. Spent 40 years away from Egypt. At the end of his second 40 years, when he was around 80 years old, the story here takes place. And he's given his commission by God to lead here. And I want you to notice something about Moses in this little story we're going to look at. I want you to notice how reluctant he is. Not just reluctant, he almost comes across as fearful in this story. And God's sending him out. And I mean, this is a big job God's given him. He's saying, oh, do me a favor, I need you to go back to Egypt. And there's over a million of your brothers and sisters back there, and they're in slavery. I want you to go talk to Pharaoh. Let Pharaoh know, you know, I'm, I'm here to take, take these people with me. No big deal. Think about this. Notice Moses, he, he's just incredibly reluctant in this story. Look at chapter 3. And, and we're going to look at two conversations that God and Moses have, and they're just wonderful. Verse 9. Verse 9. God, God speaking to, to Moses. And now the cry of the Israelites has reached me. And I have seen the way the Egyptians are impressing them. So now go. I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. 
But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And God said, I will be with you. Stop right there. Keep your finger there. Notice Moses. He says, Who am I? You want me to go to Egypt and bring all these people out? Who am I? Doesn't sound like someone who's real intent on, on leading here, but notice what God says to him. And please take this to heart, you guys. And God said, I will be with you. That's great stuff right there. Jump down to verse 13. Again, Moses gets a little whiny. Moses said to God, suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they ask me, what is his name? Then, what shall I tell them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are saying to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. So again, Moses says, well, what if I go and tell them this and they ask for your name? Moses is not excited at all right now about this commission he's received. Um, jump over to the beginning of chapter 4. 4 verse 1, Moses answered, What if they do not believe me or listen to me and say, The Lord did not appear to you? Again, this is the third time in a very short period here we've seen an excuse. Three times now. He said, Lord, what if they don't believe me? And right after this is when the Lord God gives him the staff and he shows him a couple of miracles that you can, you can do. I'm going to be with you. God keeps reassuring him. Moses keeps whining. Okay. Jump over to verse, verse 10. Moses said to the Lord, Oh, Lord, I have never been eloquent, neither in the past nor since you have spoken to your servant. I am slow of speech and tongue. Some scholars would argue that Moses might have even had a challenge with stuttering. He says right here, I'm not your guy. I'm slow of speech. I'm not good with my tongue. Okay? Look at verse 11. The Lord said to him, Who gave man his mouth? Who makes him deaf or mute? Who gives him sight or makes him blind? Is it not I, the Lord? Now go! I will help you speak and will teach you what to say. Look at 13. But Moses said, Oh, Lord, please! Send someone else to do it. This is a great conversation here, you guys. Moses is being called into service. We are being called into service. God assures him over and over here, I'll be with you. Would you just relax? I'll be with you. Question for you this morning. Where is it you are serving? Because leadership, my friends, all throughout Scripture comes down to servant leadership. If you want true leadership, go out and serve someone. Having leadership just because someone gives you authority will never last. Having leadership because you've served someone is where it's at, my friends. Where are you serving? It's all about service. Let's look at, let's fast forward here a little bit. Turn to 33, Exodus 33. Another conversation that Moses has with God. Notice the different attitude. Moses has been to Egypt. He's seen the miracles. He's brought the people out. He's been leading now for a time. Notice the difference in this conversation compared to the one we just had. Look at uh, verse 12. It's titled, Moses and the Glory of the Lord. Verse 12 in, in chapter 33. Moses said to the Lord, You have been telling me, lead these people. But you have not let me know whom you will send with me. 
You have said, I know you by name, and you have found favor with me. If you are pleased with me, teach me your ways. So I may know you continue to find favor with me. Remember that this nation is your people. Keep your finger there. Notice the difference in Moses here. He's talking with confidence here. He's talking with confidence to God. He says to him, you've been telling me, Lord, to lead these people. You know, you're, you're pleased with me. Notice the different choice here he makes, though. A moment ago, all he did was make excuses. In the moment, the choice he made was to make an excuse. Notice the different choice he makes here. He says, teach me your ways. It's a different guy talking to God here. Teach me your ways. Notice what he says in the last, in 13, there. he says, remember that this nation is your people. How would you like to be standing before God and start reminding him of stuff? That'd be odd, wouldn't it? Okay, God, well, you need to remember this. That'd be a little different. He's confident, though, now. Remember that this nation is your people, Lord. That's pretty bold. Let's move on. Verse 14. Again, God reassures him. He says, the Lord replied, my presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. How good a news is that, my friends? Then Moses said to him, if your presence does not go with us, do not send us up from here. How will anyone know that you are pleased with me and with your people unless you go with us? What else will distinguish me and your people from all the other people on the face of the earth? Look at 17 here. And the Lord said to Moses, I will do the very thing you have asked because I am pleased with you and I know you by name. And then he finishes it off here. Then Moses said, Now show me your glory. This is some wonderful stuff. This is a different person that we just saw in chapter 3. He says, if you're not going to go up with us, there's no sense in us even going, he tells him. <clears throat> and the Lord said to Moses, I will do the very thing you have asked because I'm pleased with you. And I know you by name. Moses then asked an incredible question of him. And it's a question that we should ask, I believe. It's obviously pertinent. And it's okay to ask it. Moses asked it. He simply says, show me your glory. And you know, a minute ago, when I was just talking about this ministry and how I can get recharged by standing up here, it's because I get to look out here every Sabbath morning. And when I look in the different faces and I think back, I see God's glory, you guys. Amen. Show me your glory. Ask God that today. Moses did. It's an okay question. God can handle it. Show me your glory. Let's turn to John 13. Gospel of John. John 13. We've been here a few times. I'm talking about leadership. I love how in that last story, Moses makes a wise choice when he says, Lord, teach me your ways. Rather than continuing with the whining, he says, you got to come with us and please teach me your ways. He makes some good choices there. In the beginning, all he did was cry. And why? John 13 is the story of Jesus and his guys gathering in the upper room. Jesus is literally hours away from the cross. There's a, a tradition they had back then that when you came to a, someone's home, they would wash your feet. A servant would wash your feet. They're getting ready for this Passover meal. And someone messed up. Someone forgot to get the servant to wash our feet. And don't kid yourself. This is a big deal. 
This is a big deal. You can bet all of the guys were murmuring. There's no one here to wash my feet. You know, and I can just imagine there's a table over in the corner. And on that table, there's a, a bowl, and there's a, a jar, and there's a towel. And it's probably just screaming at them over there. And everybody's wondering what's going on. Jesus gets up walks over there, takes off his outer garment, puts a towel around his waist, and grabs the implements and starts coming back towards the apostles. Can you imagine this? I bet you could cut the air in there with a knife. Jesus, the greatest teacher of all, rabbi, rabboni, teacher, no, recognizes something here. He says, you know what? I've got myself a really good teaching on. And the choice he makes in the moment is to serve. He doesn't hesitate. He makes the right choice in his leadership style, which is servant leadership. Let's read verse uh, 12. John 13, 12. It says, when he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. I tell you the truth. No servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. Jesus stoops to washing their feet. And he knows that this coming day ahead of him, he's going to the cross. He also knows that all these guys are going to punt on him. They're all going to desert him. And what does he do? He washes their feet, my friends. And he talks about being a servant. And he also gives us a directive here. He says, go and do likewise. Now, he's not telling you to go see how many people's feet you can wash. He's telling you to get out there and serve. Serve each other, and in doing that, you will serve me. And he says, you'll be blessed by it. And the word blessed in there is, the Greek word for blessed is makarios. And it's a powerful word. It means fully, full-on blessed. And he finishes with that. He says, now that you know these things, you will be blessed <coughs> if you do them. We will be blessed in our service. In, in Exodus chapter 3, Moses knew nothing, you guys. He knew nothing. He was given this huge job that he was frightened of obviously, and he knew nothing. He made a bunch of bad choices in that initial conversation. But as the Lord continued to work with him, he started making better choices. And he asked the Lord, teach me your ways. And Moses became this incredible servant in the Old Testament. But in the beginning, he knew nothing. John chapter 13, Jesus knew everything. And he does not hesitate. When the time comes to serve, he doesn't think twice. He serves. Servant leadership, my friends. And again, today we talk about choice and we talk about leadership. And we want to start at the foundation of our leadership, which means I need to lead my life. And I need to live it in a way and lead it in a way that will give Jesus the glory. Today, I hope and pray that you'll just think about your relationship with Jesus. Take him with you today. Talk with him all day long. Have this relationship. You'll be blessed by it. He'll help you to lead your life in a way that will give him the glory. And again, I ask you today, where are you serving? Where is it that you're serving? Be faithful today. We talk about choice. 
God's in charge and he loves us. We talk about that a lot around here. God's in charge and he loves me. And if that's the case, I can have some peace of mind today. Because he's in charge. His plans usurp my plans. But today I ask you to be faithful. Be faithful in the little things. And watch him take care of all the rest of the stuff. Be faithful in the little things. And watch him orchestrate the rest of your life. Be faithful, my friends, in the little things. And watch him orchestrate that life. Watch him show you his glory. Let's pray. Father God, we, we thank you. We love you. And Lord, we just uh, ask you to guide us. Help us in the, in the moment by moment choices in our lives. Help us to be better leaders of our own lives, Lord. That we might serve those around us and in doing that, serve you. Lord, help us to, to make better choices in the moment. Help us to know that you're in charge, though, Lord. That your plans will come to fruition in our life. And Lord, again, we just thank you for loving us. We thank you today for the cross. We thank you for all your blessings. And as we always do, we lift up our prayers in that wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 We're going to have some